Hello and welcome to another Retro Cores Gear and Pickups. It's been a while since we did one of these, but that's a good thing because there is now a lot of stuff to show you. Not only that, but there's a lot of stuff that you guys have been buying too. So let's head on over to the white table, check out these games in closer detail, and after that we'll see what you guys have been buying. Alright, let's get on down to it. So here we are over by the white desk and the first thing I want to show you is two bits of hardware. So we have the PC Engine Core Graphics and the PC Engine CD ROM ROM. Now I don't actually need this but this came with this so I'm stuck with this. But anyway the thing is, is my original CD ROM ROM decided to stop playing games. It would play music CDs just fine but whenever you try to boot up a game it would just say read error. Weird thing is it would play the music tracks from the game, just wouldn't load up the data. So I thought my CD run run must have finally died. So I went and bought this fully reconditioned model. It's got new gears in it, it's got uh, a new laser, or reconditioned laser. It's got fully uh, recap as well. And after it came, I tested it out and yeah, it works just fine, this works just fine as well. And then my, uh, my original CD run run booted up without any problems so yeah um, it seems that buying this wasn't actually necessary now I'm going to keep this because um, these machines are getting old and my original one which does look absolutely mint it's completely scratch free it's pure white this one's got some scratches here on the lid don't know if you can see them in the video and it is slightly off white color so I want to keep this as a backup um, and this I'll probably just sell on but uh, yeah, um, a very, very weird situation. But there you go. That's what happens when you get uh, one of the first uh, CD console-based drives to ever be made. Very temperamental. All right, so let's take a look at the games. And we'll start off with the more modern stuff. Here we go with the Wonder Boy Dragon's Trap. Now this is a limited run version, as you can see here, limited run number 13. And it does come with a reversible cover, as you can see. Oops, there's a spoiler for what's coming later. <laughs> it has the uh, original cover on the inside there. And I do really like this uh, limited run version, because it comes with um, a Master System style manual. Very reminiscent of the old European Sega Master System manuals. Pretty cool. Now, as for the game itself, I do really like it. Um, it's basically a 100% faithful remake of the Master System game. But they have put uh, some enemies in different locations here and there, which does make the game a little bit tougher than it originally was. I'm not too keen on the music, mind you. I don't like the new music that much. But uh, when I play it, I play it with the new graphics and the Sega Master System FM soundtrack. It does have the FM soundtrack built in, which is really, really nice. So yeah, if you're a Wonderboy, the Dragon's Trap fan, or Wonderboy 3 as it was also known, check this out, you won't be disappointed. With password save, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, sticking with the PlayStation 4, we have Zero. What's this? Zero Meri Garasu No e Miko And um, I believe this is a what's a Fatal Frame in English isn't it? This is originally a, a Wii U exclusive but it has now been ported to the PS4 and I believe a couple of other systems as well um, Switch maybe one of them and also uh, Xbox Series X Unfortunately I couldn't get hold of the Xbox Series X version so I've got this PlayStation 4 version here which was easy to get in Japan it's not uh, much of a remaster to be honest, it looks very last gen in terms of graphics, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent game. The idea is as you walk around these creepy Japanese settings, uh, take them photographs of the demons with your uh, psychokinesis camera <laughs> to kill them off. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but that's that. I don't think there's any manual in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> I'm terrible, aren't I? I'm not putting the games in the right uh, cases. Let's put Doris over there and we'll put the game back into its correct box. And if you want, you can try out that number because I certainly don't care. 
All right, also sticking with PlayStation 4 is Hades. Now this is one of those things that you buy when you're completely drunk and you're doing a bit of late night auction shopping. I already have this on the Xbox Series X running a 4K 60 frames per second, so why on earth I bought this on PlayStation 4, I don't know. As you can see from the video up here and the back of the box, it is an overhead shooter. I have not played it on the PlayStation 4 and I probably never will. Should I return it? Well, <laughs> I wish I could, but because it was bought from uh, Yahoo Auctions, brand new sealed, I can't return it. So yeah, let that be a lesson to you. Um, don't go shopping when you're pretty drunk because you'll just end up buying crap that you have no idea why you bought it. All right. And moving on to another remake of sorts. This is Crisis Trilogy Remastered. Or the Crisis Remastered Trilogy comes uh, on various uh, consoles. This is the Xbox Series X version here, the best version you can get on console. And it consists of Crisis, Crisis 2, and Crisis 3. Now, I'd never played the original Crisis before, believe it or not, and playing it here, yeah, it was all right. It's kind of aged, I think, but it is okay. Crisis 2, I actually finished earlier on today, and now I'm starting Crisis 3. The games do look really, really nice on uh, the Xbox Series X, 4K, 60 frames per second. Uh, Crisis 1 actually has uh, two graphics modes, so you can play it in performance or graphic mode, with a bit of ray tracing here and there. These two games don't have that option, they're just being updated with new textures and so on. But they do run at a very nice 60 frames per second. Inside you do get these little cards, or little card I should say. Um, yeah. To be honest, I'd rather have a manual. But apparently that is a thing that people want. And sticking with another remake or another remaster, I suppose you would say, this is Sonic Colors. Uh, notice it's got the U in the title there. This is the European version. And this is a remake of the Wii, uh, was it? Yeah, Nintendo Wii game. The Xbox Series X version, also on PS4, PS5, I believe. Uh, comes with brand new textures, much higher resolution, of course, 4K. Uh, it's got HDMI, uh, not HDMI, uh, HDR, and runs at a lovely solid 60 frames per second. Probably one of the best Sonic games that have been released in a long, long time. Well, apart from Sonic Mania, that is. Unfortunately, it's not as good as Sonic Mania, but it still is a pretty decent entry into the Sonic game universe. Not too sure about all these things, though. So that is it for the newer stuff, and now it's all retro. And first in the retro games, we have got the Vagin, the Vagin, the Vagin project for the PlayStation. Unfortunately, this is the PlayStation best re-release. So it's got the whole white border around the cover, but as you can see, the disc is fairly decent in condition, and the manual is also very, very nice. Let's take a look in the manual quickly. Now this game, was one of the uh, very early releases for the machine. I believe it was uh, one of the uh, launch titles, wasn't it? In, or at least it was in certain countries. And basically, it's just random. You can play a normal mode, arcade mode. So we've got a Tate screen and panorama mode. So basically stretched. And yeah, that's all there is to it. It's just random and a very, very good version of random. It certainly is. So yeah. I love this little warning at the back of the book. <laughs> Don't tip your TV on its side, you're gonna knacker it. But we put that mode in there anyway, just to uh, make you feel like you have to. And that is it for the PlayStation games. <laughs> so not a lot of PlayStation. From here on out, it is all PC Engine. Yes, I have gone absolutely nuts on PC Engine CD games. Okay, this is also Crusher Palladium. Or at least that's what the English name is titled. Japanese just says Palladium on it. All right, and this is a turn-based action battle game. And I will be honest and say, I haven't even played this yet. This was another drunken buy from a Yahoo, Yahoo Auctions. Don't know why I bought it. I think I thought the cover looked pretty cool. And um, yeah, I went and picked it up. But you know it's gonna be a NAF game because it is released by Packing video.
Oh yeah, anything with the packing video name on it is gonna be pretty bad. So that's that, oh yeah, you can take a look at the cover there on the back. Hmm. Okay, and next up on, play, on PlayStation, sorry, on PC Engine, we have Cho Aineke. Oh yes, the very erotic and strange shoot 'em up from NCS Messiah, featuring our favorite muscle men. Look at those dudes there. <laughs> These games are very erotic in uh, the style. There's not much in the manual, so I'm not gonna bother showing you it, but there you have it. And you can see on the video up here, what the game is all about. Next we have Frey CD. Now this is one of those games that's very expensive on the PC Engine and also one of those games that's sought after by collectors. Hence why it's very expensive. And that's kind of strange because it is actually by Micro Cabin who are not known for making good games. So what sort of game is it? Well, taking a look at the back of the box, you can see it is some sort of, I don't know, overhead shooter adventure game. So taking a look in the manual, unfortunately it's in black and white. You will be able to see that some of the sections are text based. Oh, well, maybe not on this picture. These are the action based sections. And there, let's see if we get some of the, there we go. Here's our text based section. So kind of think of it as a Wonder Boy in Monsterland or sorry, Wonder Boy, yeah, Wonder Boy in Monsterland style of RPG. So nothing too heavy, but it, there is a bit of text in there. So knowing a bit of the language would be helpful. It is quite a shame that the manual is in black and white, but I believe that is because it's by Micro Cabin. Next up, we have Rusa Yetsura for the PC Engine CD-ROM. So this is one of the very early games. It's not a super CD-ROM. Now the Urusai Yatsura game on the Mega CD is amazing. It's basically a fully animated game powered by the Mega CD, no FMV. But this one is more still, so there's a little bit of animation in here. But it's nowhere near the level of the Mega CD game. And that's not surprising considering this is one of the earlier releases for the format. Uh, basically what it is, is a, a text story based RPG featuring all the original voice actors and actresses from the anime. In fact, there they all are there in the manual. So, unless you know Japanese, there's no way you'll be able to complete, complete this one. Konami time now with a Super CD-ROM title. This is Marshall Champion. Now, you may not be aware, but Marshall Champion is actually an arcade port. That's right, the original is an arcade game and it is a one-on-one -on -one beat -em up Now, it's certainly not going to be better than the likes of Street Fighter or some of the Neo Geo fighting games on the machine, but it is a fairly decent and competent uh, fighting game for the platform. It's a little bit stiff compared to the arcade and the character sprites are a little bit small, as you can see here from that screenshot, but it's reasonable, and it's got one of the best named characters ever, Titi. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it says in Japanese as well. Titi, yeah. But I'm gonna say it's Titi, because I'm kind of juvenile. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting one-on-one beat -em, one -on -one beat -em up and definitely worth trying out if you've never played it before. If you've got access to main, boot it up, you might like it. In fact, I think the CD is actually in the machine. Let me go and check out the machine. Yes, it was. Here's the CD here. Put that back in the box. Now, the PC Engine is home to many arcade ports. Some of them very good and some of them shockingly bad. And this is one of the shockingly bad ones. This is Golden Axe. And this was actually ported by Telenet Games. And as we all know, Telenet Games are not exactly the best company when it comes to quality. Um, distributed by Reno Games or Renovation Games. Now, this looks very poor, as you can see from the video in the top corner. But what you can't see from the video is just how badly it plays. The game just sucks. I mean, the collision detection is terrible on it. There's so many issues with um, the way it moves, the way it feels, it is just so bad. In fact, the only saving grace to this game are the cutscenes and even those are kind of boring so yeah 
Golden Axe, one of those very bad arcade ports on the PC Engine CD-ROM along with Strider. Now one arcade port that isn't bad on the PC Engine is this. This is Horror Story. I believe it's called Demon's World in English. And this is a port of the Toa Plan uh, arcade original. And it only ever got ported to the PC Engine, which is very unusual. I would have expected this to be ported to the Famicom at least. But this game is very, very rare these days and cost an awful lot of money. This one cost me 10,000 yen, which is kind of reasonable actually for the price of this game. But as you can see, you can it's a two-player simultaneous game. You play as a, either the red dude or the blue dude. Actually, blue dude is player one, red dude is player two. And um, it's a very simple game. You just basically go from uh, left to right, blasting everything inside. But being a tall plan game, it is certainly not an easy game. Oops. And as you can see, we have seven stages in total. Graphics are quite nice, it's very colorful, and it sounds pretty good as well. If you do uh, have the ability to find this one, I really do recommend step snapping it up because the price of this game is just gonna keep going up and up and up and up. It's one of those PC Engine games that will just never come down in price. Next we have Genocide. Now Genocide is actually a port of, um, I think it's an NEC PC 98 game, and it's completely not a crap. And you can tell it's crap because on the back they don't even show you any screenshots. Uh, this port was done by Brain Grey, also another company not known for making quality products. Now the reason why this game is so crap is because it is very unfair. Um, Basically, what happens is enemies just rush into you and bombard you and it is 100% impossible to get through a stage without taking, you know, without taking a hit. You are going to lose uh, energy and you are going to die. It is just unavoidable. Awful game. Thankfully, Genocide 2, which was uh, on the Shop X68000, I think FM Towns and also Super Famicom, is much better than this. Okay, and another game which is also a port, and this time a port of a Famicom game. This is, well, it says up here, it's Downtown. In other words, it's the uh, Hot Blooders family, and this is the sports one. I really don't know why I bought this either. I thought I, I must have been another drunken buy. Um, I think I saw this screenshot here and thought it was the beat em up, uh, but it's not, it's the sports game. Basically, uh, you just play with a load of friends, you've got to get from A to B and beat the crap out of each other as you do it. First one to the uh, goal is the winner. So yeah, that's that. Lots of different modes to play, uh, lots of different uh, types of uh, sports which you can do. But um, yeah, definitely not for me. And another conversion, another port, this time a Mega CD. <laughs> It's a lot of ports on the uh, old PC Engine, isn't there? And this is another dirt on the Mega CD. This is terrible. This is Black Hole Assault. It's actually got quite a funny intro where the uh, two uh, main characters start having a fight over the girl. It's pathetic. Um, but yeah, if you play this on the Mega CD, or even, I think uh, it's on, oh, it's a Heavy Nova that's on the Mega Drive. Same thing. Just, a, it's the first one. Um, but yeah, if you play this on the Sega machine, you'll know just how bad this is. And of course it's bad because it's by Micronet. So let's uh, get the manual out here. Oops, it's got stuck, hasn't it, behind the prongs. Yeah, let's just take a quick look through the manual. Look, even the manual is poor, look at that. Just one little tiny screenshot there. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't even be bothered making a nice manual for it. And as I'm sure you can see in the video, that this is not a very interesting game. Jeez, that's bad. Okay, another game by Telenet, although it's distributed by Lasersoft. But don't be fooled, it is a Telenet uh, company. This is Valis 4. Now, you may know that Super Valis 4 is on the uh, Super Famicom and also released in the States on the uh, uh, Super NES or SNES. And taking a look at these screenshots here, you think it was the exact same game. Well, it isn't. 
the uh, PC Engine game is very different. I mean, it does have some of the same stages. Yeah, this did come first. But it also has a lot of different stages and a lot more story than the Super Famicom game. In fact, this should be the one that's called Super because it contains more characters as well. In the Super Famicom game, you just play as one character, but in this one, you play as the characters also featured in Ballas 3, which is very interesting. So why they uh, didn't do a straight port over to the Super Famicom, I don't know. But yeah, there you go, she's in Ballas 3. And being a CD-ROM title, it's full of different uh, introductions and cutscenes. The music, though, is not that good. You'd expect it to be much better than the cartridge version, the Super Famicom game, but to be honest, I think the Super Famicom game has better music than this. But yeah, if you do manage to get hold of this, it's worth giving it a try, but uh, don't be expecting the best game in the world. And finally, an original game for the PC Engine. Man, you'd think all the PC Engine games were not original, wouldn't you? It just happens to be uh, that this uh, particular program today We've got a lot of uh, arcade conversions and ports and stuff. This is Flash Hiders, which is actually also on the Super Famicom, but I think this one came out first. And this is a one-on-one -on -one beat -em up with RPG tones. Let me just get the manual out and I can show you. Oh, okay, case so is broken there. Okay, have a quick look at the back of the box there, as you can see. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Pretty nice. The characters look quite beefy on the back of the box, but they are actually zoomed in. So we're taking a look in the manual. Let's see what we've got. So a nice color manual, which is always nice to see. And here we go with a rundown of the characters. And we've got the voice actors and actresses names here. Oh, we've got the uh, registration card in there. Now here you can see all the different uh, attributes which, which uh, the game is uh, focuses on. So when you play the story mode you can actually just uh, focus on the story and the game will play itself and you can choose different uh, options to pad up and so on using these icons down here. Um, I was hoping that would show you in the manual but they don't seem to actually show you that. <laughs> uh, it does have a normal versus mode, so you can play it as a normal one-on-one -on -one beat em up but the main meat of this game is uh, based around the story mode. So uh, yeah, I think um, they put uh, the <laughs> actual playability second to the story, but it isn't too bad to play, it's a fairly reasonable game. Now we got one more game before we take a look at all your lovely buys. This is Terraforming. A game which was also released in the States with the ultimate BS um, advertising campaign. They said that this was a game developed by Sid Mead. Yeah, yeah, like he's a game programmer. Sid Mead, in case you didn't know, is a designer and probably most famously known for the uh, design work on Blade Runner. Now, he did do some of the design work on this game. In fact, um, he only did some of the enemy ships, he didn't do all of it. And he most certainly did not develop the game. The game was developed by Right Stuff, the same company that uh, developed uh, Flash Hiders we just saw. And uh, as you can see, it is a shoot em up. In fact, on the Japanese box, the only place Sid's name is written is right down here at the very bottom. <laughs> oh man. So let's take a look at the manual. Let's have a quick look at that, if we can get it out of the box. I do like the artwork on the front of that, it's very nice, isn't it? So yeah, we've got a prologue of the story, not that uh, shoot mobs near the story. And then we've got some images of the graphics. Now as the shoot map goes, it's okay. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, amazing by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a competent shoot map. It's got a nice uh, weapon system and the game really, really does push parallax uh, scrolling, something the, uh, the PC Engine is not famously known for. Uh, unfortunately, because the parallax is so heavy, sometimes you will lose track of what you're meant to be aiming at and um, end up getting killed and not knowing what killed you. But uh, yeah, uh, there you go, there's Sid. And basically here's his artwork and there's a bit, of, I think that's from Blade Runner, isn't it? That bit down there. Yeah, there you go, there's Blade Runner there. So yeah. 
got a little bit of his work there in the manual. But uh, yeah, as far as shoot ups go, it's okay. And uh, yes, Sid uh, developed this game according to the American box, but no, apparently it was programmed by uh, this guy here, and the graphics were all by these people here. And uh, yeah, I don't see Sid's name anywhere except for the visual concept design up at the top. Nah. Anyway, it's a reasonable game. So before we take a look at the games that you guys have been buying, I want to give you a bit of a tip here. Now this was actually told to me by one of the viewers of the channel. And um, basically I was complaining that the, uh, the cable on the uh, PC Engine controllers is just too short, which it is. It's very short. It's less than a meter in length. And um, I was saying I'm having a terrible time trying to find extension cables for these uh, Japanese controllers because they just don't exist. And he told me, what I need to do is get myself a Macintosh uh, serial cable and um, that will work as an extension cable for PC Engine controllers and he is absolutely right. Uh, it fits in here and of course it fits in here. They are the exact size, the exact pin layout for the Japanese PC Engine controller. So if you are a Japanese PC Engine owner and you need longer cables, go and get yourself some old Macintosh serial cable adapters of course make sure one end is female one end is male otherwise it's not going to connect is it but these are fairly easy to get and not that expensive so top tip there and thank you to the person who told me that unfortunately i can't remember who it was now okay anyway that's enough yapping from me let's take a look at the games that you guys have been buying and remember if you want to send in your gaming pickups to the next video just drop them in at the email address down here and i'll feature them on the next show all right guys until then Keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya.